rather than a normal mailbag where we uh, open all these up and pretty much do nothing with them, I'm going to open these up one at a time. So they'll go back into the box and then we'll open them up and we'll do something with them straight away. The Dirty Dozen, part five. Let's put some light on the subject first. Nice. Okay, so grabbing one from the pile. Oh, is that grabbing two from the pile? Um, are these the same? Yeah, they look pretty much the same. Um, flaring a little bit. Let's. Um, I think I'm getting a better view than what you guys are getting. But anyway, let's get one out and see what we have got. If it's going to come out. So we've got something and a header to match. And it's the same thing in this packet here. Let's get a little closer and see what it is. There is a chip in the middle. Looks like maybe a Chinese character. Then 8606C3H and then 052 microfarad, UF. Mm, okay, that's interesting. Um, what can we see on the outside? It says LIS3DH. And then, oh, okay, this is interesting. Right, so I'm guessing that this is a 3D accelerometer module. Very little in the way of um, 80. Oh, okay, so that'd be for setting presumably the uh, I squared C address. Not really sure. Very little in the way of external components. Resist, couple of resistors, couple of capacitors, and that's it. And then we've got three analog inputs or outputs. I want to say outputs. And we've got an int one and an int two. Would that be for selecting bits and pieces? So yeah, maybe if you provide it high or low, something happens. Looks like it's gonna be an interesting data sheet to read this one. Uh, and then we've got we've got CS. CS normally means chip select, I think. So whether it's got something to do with maybe the how it's communicating. SD0, SDA, and SCL. So SDA and SCL, there's your I squared C. So maybe with the three of them together, SD0 or SDO, that would be whether you're communicating maybe either I squared C or serial. Not really sure, making it up as I go along. And then we've got ground and VCC. Uh, VCC would be maybe five volts. I'm not really sure. So again, the data sheet will hopefully reveal something. And then on the back, yeah, pretty much the same. Three ADCs, a couple of int uh, inputs, and then yeah, the same on the back. All right, I think that probably the important thing to do now is to solder up the headers, and then to connect, presumably connect an Arduino, Uno, or Nano, or something like that to it, and see if we can't um, talk to it. That would be nice, and get something out of it. Three D accelerometer, pretty cool. So this is the code that I have found and modified online and probably spent way too long with it. So, uh, But there's links there and I'll leave all the code on the blog as well so you can have a bit of a play if you want to. Basically what I've done is set up uh, an LED which is an alarm. Uh, we've got some variables here which represents the movement in the X, Y and Z. Uh, well really it's the acceleration, not, not the movement in the X, Y and Z planes. There's a fall detect amount there's a boolean as to whether there has been a fall. There's a, uh, a variable here to keep track of the biggest fall. There's a fall trigger, so how sensitive is it before it's called a fall? And then some timing stuff, so um, you'll see how that works a bit later on. So we start with the import of this um, SparkFun uh, LIS3DH library, and so we define that. And you can see it's in the I2C mode or I squared C, and then it's got an address there for that. We start the serial, and uh, then it's just got the uh, alarm LED set to output, 
some settings here which you can have a bit of a play with. I've just gone more or less with standard settings, slightly higher sample rate than what was in the original code. Then we start the actual um, uh, IMU itself and give it a little bit of time to, um, to settle down. I've got a little function here which just says if the alarm is raised, um, uh, then just put the LED uh, on high and then uh, change the bull into true. We've had a fall and set a timer off. This is the function in which if you're operating this from let's say an ESP32 or an ESP8266 that you would get it to text, email or call for help. Uh, let's say if this was a fall detector. Okay, so this is the start of the loop. Let's start our time. And then we're going to get some information. Let's go and get the acceleration in the X, Y, and Z planes. And then it's just a couple of adjustments here to keep them all at zero. Uh, because, of course, in the Z direction, it is in a, an acceleration field already. So it is reading um, 9.8 or 0.98, etc. So uh, I've just I made the allowance that to get them all back to zero to start with. And then we um, basically take all of those and we take the square root of each of them squared. And so basically this is plotting the uh, value in an X, Y and Z almost like a three dimensional room. And the ideal would be 0, 0, 0 and the worst would be 100, 100, 100. Uh, and so it's just saying, OK, where are we? And then if the fall detector is greater than the fall trigger, then we need to raise the alarm. Then we're just uh, printing out the X, Y and Z so we can see them. We also print out the fall detect and then this value called biggest fall. So you just keep a track of what's happening over time with regard to um, you know, the biggest fall that's happened. And, uh, and then all we do is we say, okay, so if there is a fall, uh, so it just says it's fallen and then I think the timer is something like five seconds at the moment. Uh, then it'll hold the light there for that five seconds and at the end of that, it'll turn it uh, low and it'll set the conditions back to the start again. And at the moment, I've got that looping um, 20 milliseconds, so it's at uh, uh, 50 hertz. Uh, you can change that to what you want. All right, so that compiles and runs fine. So if we go to the serial plotter and see what's happening with the actual device, uh, then you can see that we've got all those lines. So the blue is going to be the X, the red's going to be the Y, the green's going to be the Z, and then we've got um, the full, um, the, uh, what's, what am I calling here? <laughs> the full detect, okay. Uh, full detect is going to be the golden one there, or the yellow one. And finally, we've got one there, which is the biggest so far. So at the moment, all these values are hovering around zero. You can see there's a bit of background. If I thump on the desk, you can see there that that's uh, reflected. And then I'll just, actually what we might do is move this around uh, so we can see what's happening with the camera going as well. That uh, makes a bit more sense. So we'll stop this and we'll go and have a play with it in the lab. This is the rig that I've got hooked up. Arduino Nano, a couple of smoothing caps. I've got the module in here, the accelerometer module, and it's just hooked up via I2C to a couple of pins on the Arduino as per the code that we just saw. And uh, I'll just start the capturing so we can see what's going on with that. And, uh, and then I'll just wiggle this thing around and see if we can find out if it's actually working. So they all look pretty much baseline at the moment. Uh, if I wiggle one way, yeah, we can see that that's in one direction. That looks like X. And then I think this is Y, so you can see the red moving, and then up and down is the green. So if you move it all around, then you can see that the, um, the code produces that plot that follows all that movement. And I can tap it, and then you can see that the light comes on, and that'll stay high for five seconds, and then it'll all drop back down to the base values again. So the idea is that if this is some sort of fall detection system, that it would contact base or send a message or email or what have you, and the whole thing goes back to zero and we're ready to go again. So it's a pretty cool device. I've had a lot of fun playing with it and a lot of fun also, uh, you know, coding it. And I think that could be quite useful. I was thinking about the next thing might be to actually code it up with an ESP8266 
and do an actual fall detection to have it send me an email, let's say, or a text on my phone. If you're keen on that, let me know. Um, that is the circuit working for this week. Can we get it? There we go. <laughs> that is the circuit working for this week. Uh, thanks for your company. We'll catch you next time.